Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, we're going to be taking an in-depth look into the all-new Aston Martin DB11. In this review, I'm going to start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, and go over the performance data. I'll take it on a thorough drive and show you many of the unique aspects throughout the interior as well as exterior. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start her up, and let her run. A huge thanks to Foreign Cars Italia for providing this example today. For more information about the dealership, including contact info and current inventory, please feel free to check out their website provided in the description box below. One of my favorite things about Aston Martins are the doors. They swing up and out to provide a functional benefit when it comes to clearing curbs and the like. It's also a beautiful styling touch that gives the appearance of wings when both doors are open. A smart key entry system is included, as is push button ignition. To start, just make sure you have the key fob within the interior, then put your foot on the brake and hit the dash mat a button to go. The DB11 is the latest figurehead of the DB bloodline, one that spans nearly 70 years. It's an all-new 2 plus 2 luxury grand tour that replaces the long-running DB9 for the 2017 model year. Spearheading Aston Martin's second century plan, which includes the launch of seven new offerings over the next seven years, the DB11 can be regarded as one of, if not the most important new product in the company's illustrious 103-year history. From the ground up, the DB11 was designed from a clean sheet of paper, featuring a new powertrain, chassis, body structure, and electrical architecture, much of which will lay the groundwork for many exciting things to come. Not only is this the first series production Aston with forced induction, it's also the quickest, fastest, and most powerful DB model ever. The styling ushers in a new era for Aston Martin, one that reimagines what it means to blend form and function. The silhouette is an automotive work of art, featuring sculpted details, intricate line work, and careful attention to detail. The headlamps are all LED and incorporate daytime running lights and low-speed cornering lights for the first time. The LED tail lamps continue the boomerang graphics seen on all modern Astons, but like the headlamps, they offer a distinct three-dimensional structure. The DB11 is 1.2 inches longer, 2.7 inches wider, and 0.3 inches taller compared to the DB9. It also rides on a 2.5 inch longer wheelbase. The front overhang has been reduced by 0.6 inches, while the rear overhang has been extended by 0.4 inches. Having a longer wheelbase enabled the V12 to be placed further back in the chassis, leading to a near perfect weight distribution of 51% in front and 49% in the rear. The front and rear tracks also widen by 3 inches and 1.7 inches respectively. Aston Martin claims a dry weight of 3,902 pounds, which is about 33 pounds lighter than before. The body structure uses a new mix of bonded aluminum pressings, extrusions, and castings. The new front hinged clamshell hood, one of the largest of its kind, is pressed from a single piece of aluminum to minimize shut lines for a cleaner surface. Pressed aluminum also makes up the roof and doors, while composite material is used for the rear quarters, front fenders, and deck lid. The front and rear bumpers, sills, front splitter, and rear diffuser are formed from injected molded plastic. Aerodynamics also played a big role when it came to design in the exterior. The front splitter helps direct a portion of air to cool the powertrain and brakes, while the rest is channeled underneath the car to a prominent rear diffuser. Where the hood lines meet the fenders is a reinterpretation of Aston Martin's signature side strakes. Small winglets within the strakes create vortices out of the high pressure air being pulled from the wheel arches. A portion of the hot air extracted from the hood vents mixes with the vortices to help with aerodynamic efficiency. Alongside the sills, which also help channel air down the body, these measures work to reduce front end lift. The roof line is characterized by a set of dramatic strakes that flow uninterrupted from the A pillars to the C pillars. For added contrast, they can be had polished or in gloss black, otherwise they can be painted to match the body. 
Perhaps the most clever aerodynamic feature though is the Aston Martin Aeroblade. At the base of the C pillars where the roof strikes end, air is taken in and channeled through the bodywork before being sent back out through the slots in the deck lid. This essentially functions as a virtual spoiler by creating a jet of disrupted air that reduces rear end lift. It also allowed for the silhouette's sloping rear end without the risk of compromised stability. At speeds greater than 90 miles per hour, a small motorized spoiler will rise up out of the deck lid to augment the aeroblade. The aggressive rear fascia incorporates decorative bezels that surround a pair of polished exhaust tips. Base pricing for the DB11 Launch Edition like you see here starts at $230,345. This example which is very nicely equipped retails for $251,814, including a $3,086 destination charge. I'll put a full run through of options and pricing in the description box below. The DB11 is available with 5 different wheel options, all measuring 20 by 9 inches in front and 20 by 11 inches in the rear. This example is fitted with the 10 spoke directional alloys featuring a gloss black diamond turn finish. High performance Bridgestone Potenza S007 summer tires are included as standard equipment, 255 45s in front and 295 35s in the rear. The tread pattern, construction, and compound of the tires were developed specifically for the DB11 to improve wet weather performance, yield more progressive on-limit behavior, and deliver more consistent handling in both wet and dry conditions. However, for greater flexibility in colder climates, a winter wheel and tire kit is also available. Providing strong stopping power are four-wheel internally ventilated cast iron disc brakes. Up front, you'll find 15.7 by 1.4 inch discs paired to 6 piston calipers. The rears consist of 14.1 by 1.3 inch discs and 4 piston calipers. The calipers are made from aluminum and are available in a variety of different colors. The DB11 is the first Aston Martin to adopt electric power assisted rack and pinion steering. It has an overall ratio of 13 to 1 and it takes 2.4 turns to lock. The level of assistance is speed dependent, making the steering feel lighter at lower speeds and firmer at higher speeds. By having the ability to fine tune the steering behavior without fighting the inherent limitations of a hydraulic system, engineers were able to truly tailor the steering's feel and overall behavior to perfectly match the DB11's character. By rigidly mounting the steering rack to the subframe, all noticeable compliance was removed, leaving crisp feedback that makes you feel connected and always in tune with the road surface. The suspension design consists of independent double wishbones in front and a multi-link rear with four corner coil springs, Bilstein adaptive dampers, and front and rear anti-roll bars. Lateral stiffness has been increased by 60% in front and 20% in the rear thanks to stiffer knuckles, bushings, and bearings. A mechanical limited slip differential controls torque delivery at the rear wheels, while active torque vectoring, another first for Aston Martin, selectively brakes the rear wheels to assist with turn-in. The stability control system also has three settings, on, track mode, and off. Sensors throughout the car are able to provide data such as vehicle speed, steering angle and steering rate, lateral and longitudinal acceleration, and vertical movement to ensure the car's dynamic behavior matches your driving style. The DB11 sources its all-new electrical architecture from Daimler, but more on that later. With it comes three drive modes, GT, Sport, and Sport Plus. They alter the behavior of the dampers, steering, engine, transmission, and torque vectoring system to progressively increase response, agility, and driver engagement. The modes are controlled by two buttons on the upper spokes of the steering wheel. The chassis settings are on the left, while the powertrain settings are on the right. The DB11 is powered by an all-new twin-turbocharged 5.2-liter V12. Designed and assembled by hand, it features an aluminum block with aluminum heads, dual overhead cams, 4 valves per cylinder, and dual variable valve timing. The basic architecture is the same as the 5.9-liter naturally aspirated V12 that it replaces, including the 89mm bore, but the stroke has been shortened from 79.5mm to 69.7mm. Fuel is delivered via port injection, accompanied by a compression ratio of 9.2 to 1. Redline is approximately 7,000 RPM. Thermal management is handled by a pair of water-to-air intercoolers mounted on either side of the engine. 
the DB11 develops 600 horsepower of 6,500 RPM and 516 pound-feet of torque between 1,500 and 5,000 RPM. Compared to a DB9 GT, that's a gain of 60 horsepower and 59 pound-feet of torque. The DB11 is estimated to hit 62 miles an hour in 3.9 seconds and accelerate to a top speed of 200 miles per hour. Power is sent to the rear wheels through a new ZF 8-speed automatic gearbox. It's an evolution of the gearbox found in the Rapide S and Vanquish and replaces the DB9 6-speed automatic. Controlled through a shift-by-wire system known as Touchtronic, all you have to do is put your foot on the brake and tap one of the four buttons across the dash. Manual shifting can be performed by a set of large metal paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. As expected from a ZF 8-speed, shifts are quick and smooth, but become even quicker and more assertive in Sport and Sport Plus mode. Thanks to redesigned packaging, the transaxle assembly was shortened by about 2.4 inches, allowing it to sit more rearward to open up a greater range of adjustability for the front seats. Creating a solid link with the engine is an alloy torque tube with a carbon fiber drive shaft. Of course, the soundtrack, like all Aston Martins, plays a big role in creating a truly delightful experience for your senses. That being said, nothing is artificial. Everything you hear comes from the intake and active exhaust system. It certainly hasn't lost much with the switch to forced induction, if anything it offers even more personality. The level of sound emitted varies depending on the drive mode. It's the quietest in GT mode, it gets progressively louder in Sport and Sport Plus mode. You can even control how loud the car starts up. It's especially impressive when cold starting in Sport Plus mode, as I'll show you next with a quick 30 second clip. The V12 also features cylinder deactivation and auto start stop technology. The former, dubbed intelligent bank activation, seamlessly shuts down one bank of cylinders when full power isn't needed. Therefore, in certain instances such as cruising, lift off, or even light acceleration, the V12 is able to run as an inline 6 for brief periods of time. Not only that, but it's able to switch which cylinder bank gets shut down to ensure that the catalytic converters on each side of the engine remain within their range of normal operating temperatures. As far as fuel economy, the DB11 is rated at 15 miles per gallon in the city and 21 miles per gallon on the highway. It averages around 17 miles per gallon. That's an improvement of 2 miles per gallon in all ratings compared to the DB9. Premium fuel is required with a total capacity of 20.5 gallons. Now let's go ahead and see if she sounds.
With Aston Martin Interiors, it's about creating an environment that bridges the gap between past and present, with beautiful craftsmanship and plenty of care instilled into every last detail. The styling language is decidedly modern, but it still has a certain old world charm that you won't find in any other competitor. When you climb into the leather clad interior, you feel like you're sitting in something truly special. You'd be hard pressed to find any plastic pieces, everything used is first rate. I'm especially fond of the metal door handles and paddle shifters. With a car like this you also want it to be an extension of your personality. Therefore you have a choice between 35 standard exterior colors and 28 standard leather colors. On top of that there's three different types of leather that aside from the standard leather can be decorated with nexus quilting, celestial perforations, brogue detailing, or a combination of all three as you see on this example. Thanks to the redesigned A-pillars and a reduction in the height and width of the sill sections, the door apertures are now larger, improving ingress and egress. Front seat occupants benefit from a 0.4 inch increase in headspace and thanks to the longer wheelbase and repackaged transmission, a greater range of seat travel. All of your power adjustments are located on either side of the transmission tunnel. Along with 4-way power lumbar, there's 3 person memory and standard heated seats. Ventilated seats are optional. Powered side bolsters are also an option if you desire additional lateral support. As you might imagine, they're extremely comfortable and perfectly suit the character of a proper GT car. Just the right amount of support without being too aggressive. The DB11 has the best ergonomics out of any Aston Martin to date. Thanks to the Daimler sourced electronics, everything is easy to use and intuitive. The majority of controls in the center stack are also touch sensitive for a modern feel. The standard headliner is made using Alcantara, but there's two leather options available as well, including this one, which features the same detailing found on the seats. You also have a choice between six interior finishers, including open pore woods, piano black trim, and two styles of carbon fiber. If that's not enough, the color of the stitching, seat belts, cabin carpet, and trunk carpet are all up for personalization in addition to custom embroidery, sill plaques, and so much more. The depth of the options list is staggering. If all of the many configurations become overwhelming, Aston Martin also offers six pre-selected designer specification color and trim options. Storage space is somewhat limited as there's no glove box. There are, however, lower door pockets and a generous center console. The latter is available with a trick power operating lid and contains all of your media inputs and two cup holders. Gaining access to the rear seat is easier now than ever before. Once you tip the backrest forward, the seat automatically does the rest. Compared to the DB9, there's 2.1 inches of additional headroom and 3.4 inches of additional legroom. It's still pretty tight back there, but it's far more usable, especially with small children. That being said, for the first time in any Aston Martin, there's rear isofix points that allow for the fitment of two child seats. At this time, the DB11 is not offered with things like adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, and pre-collision detection, but there is a standard 360 degree camera system and automatic park assist. Also, there's dual stage driver and passenger front airbags, side curtain airbags, knee airbags, and seat matted thorax airbags. Like I said, the majority of controls across the center stack are touch sensitive, but another pretty cool detail is that leather actually wraps around the transmission buttons and central air vents. The climate controls are pretty self-explanatory, it's a dual zone setup with front and rear defrost. You can also control the temperature, air distribution, and air flow through the infotainment system by hitting the little touch sensitive menu button within the climate stack. Right beneath that you have more touch sensitive buttons for the infotainment system, parking sensors, 360 degree camera system and auto start stop feature. There's three hard buttons in the bottom for the central locking and hazards. Aston Martin offers three audio systems for the DB11. The standard system has an output of 400 watts while a premium upgrade raises output to 700 watts. This example is equipped with the range topping Bang & Olufsen Bayo Sound audio system. Along with the output of 1000 watts, the decorative metal speaker grills add even more visual appeal to the interior, especially with the tweeters on the dash which automatically rise up when you power on the audio system. The infotainment is routed through an 8 inch screen perched on top of the dash. It's primarily controlled through a rotary dial in the center console. 
the additional touchpad controller is an option. A lot of this will be very familiar if you spent time with some Mercedes newest products thanks to the Daimler sourced electronics. Satellite radio, HD radio, and navigation come standard along with hands-free Bluetooth technology. You also have real-time weather updates. The DB11 features a repackaged fuel tank that opens up the ability for the trunk to accommodate a full luggage set, which Aston Martin also offers as an option. There's 9.5 cubic feet of cargo space. Along with a small cubby to the left, there's two locking compartments in the bulkhead that store a tire inflation kit and other necessary tools. The trunk lid itself also has a built-in soft closing feature. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the Aston Martin DB11. Be sure to stay tuned next time, leave a like and subscribe today, there's always a lot more where that came from. Take care everyone.